everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Sam, this is Frugalissima, and this is day 20 of 100 days of sewing. Whee, we've got to 20. I'm gonna run out of fingers. <laughs> Today's video is three surprising things that you can do with your sewing machine. Uh, but first of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who's been watching these 100 days of sewing. It's a little series that I've been putting together uh, over the course of 100 days. I had a brief hiatus last week while I settled back into work and had some a few family issues, but I'm back with a vengeance. So first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's been coming back to these uh, videos and uh, welcome to anybody who's new. So I just want to share my love of sewing with people and uh, show people that it's not an expensive or difficult hobby to get involved with and uh, I've been producing videos about sewing on a budget and some little hints and techniques and some sew-alongs as well. Uh, so on to today's video. So I've got three little techniques uh, that you can use on most sewing machines. Certainly two of them you can do on all sewing machines, but one of them might be specific to uh, the electronic ones. So the first one is to how to sew a button on with a sewing machine. I've just used some bright colours here so that you can see them. The second one is how to do how to do a thread chain on a sewing machine. Again, I've used bright colours so that you can see what I'm doing here, and obviously you won't want a thread chain that big. I have done uh, as part of the series how to do a thread chain uh, by hand, and I will put a link to that. And the third one is how to do darning. On to the first technique for today and that is sewing buttons on with your sewing machine. This was quite a, a revelation for me when I discovered that you could do this because uh, I don't know about anybody else as much as I, I, I don't mind hand sewing uh, but buttons are just a, they can be a bit fiddly and I just find this uh, infinitely quicker. Once you've, once you've discovered that you can do this you'll, you'll never sew a button on, on by hand again unless it's uh, a shank button. You can't do, use this technique for a shank button. So this is a uh, two-hold button and that's what I've demonstrated. These these are just some funky little buttons I got off Amazon. Uh, just with two holes. Can be done with four. Um, that's a four-hold one. You just go in twice. You do it twice. Move it, move it, it down. Um, so onto the demonstration. Okay so the very first thing you need to do uh, when sewing buttons on with your sewing machine is to drop your feed dogs uh, and that's that on my machine that's the switch here at the back and you will actually see the feed dogs go down um, and that's to stop the uh, fabric feeding through. Right so after after dropping your feed dogs uh, you want it on a zigzag stitch uh, which for me is a 07 on this machine I've lowered my stitch length down to as low as it will go. It won't go any further. Um, and I've faffed about with my width of my um, zigzag uh, and I think it should be okay at a four for this button. So I've chosen a nice bright button so that you can see what I'm doing. First of all, um, decide where you want your button. And I've got a nice line down there, so I know that's the middle, So, but I would have already aligned that up with my button holes um, before I make a decision where to sew. But this is just to show you how to do it on a machine. So the zigzag will go left to right, left to right. So your button holes need to go left to right. If you don't want them facing up and down, then you will need to turn your fabric round. I'm just doing it like this for now. So I'm just aligning my button holes with that central line there. Uh, and then dropping this foot, I've just got a normal foot Okay, so fabric under, button under. Your button, the hardest part of this is getting uh, your button aligned and your foot to hold it in place. I'm just using the normal foot and you just need to be aware where those holes are. And if you just line them up, just line them up with your foot so 
So I do my first couple of stitches by hand cranking just to make sure that those it's hitting both holes and I want a longish thread on there as well. About half a dozen stitches. And pull it out. Leave it with a longish thread. Done it nice bright colour so that you can see. Um, and there's just one last little thing to do, and that's to knot it off at the back. Right, so those are your buttons sewn on with the machine from the front, and you can see there are two threads here at the at the front and two threads at the back. And your final step is uh, to pull these pull on these threads to pull one of the threads back through. So I'll show you a close up of how it's done. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this. So what you want to do is just grab, grab hold of one of these threads. One will pull a, th a thread through from the front and one won't. And I've just managed to find the one that does. And it'll, it has a little loop here. And that's the thread coming through from the front. And you just need to get your seam ripper or any sharp object a bodkin would do. And you're just pulling that through. And you're left with one at the front there and three at the back. And all you're going to do is just tie those off. It just gives it that little extra bit of security. Um, I've seen I've seen other tutorials that put, the, uh, put it on with a machine but don't fasten it off and I just always like to fasten it off. So I'll give it two good knots. Two, just a normal knot, trim it down, there are sharp scissors, you can trim it a bit closer if you want, and trim that one off at the front, that one that one doesn't do anything, nothing will come unraveled if you, if you, if you just trim that. I've attached hundreds of buttons like this and they've never ever come off. Particularly if you do it, you know, do it quite, quite um, thoroughly. That that's not going anywhere. And if you want, as a little added extra, you can put a little spot of fray check on the front and the back. But that is completely unnecessary. I've only just started doing that extra trip uh, thing because I've got some, and it seems to last forever. And this is a prim product that I use. Uh, you can buy that anywhere. So just one last thing to remember when uh, you've sewn on your button is to put your feed dog, to put your feed dogs back up on your machine. Uh, the amount of times I've gone back to my machine and uh, <laughs> it won't sew, it's because I've forgotten to put my feed dogs back up. Uh, so just, just remember that. Uh, let me know if you've ever sewn buttons on with your sewing machine if it's some, or if it's something new uh, and leave me a comment below. Um, Please remember to uh, like and subscribe these videos if uh, if you're finding this sort of thing useful. So the next little technique is to make a thread chain on the machine rather than by hand, and it's it's a quick little method and uh, done it in a contrast thread here, so you can see, um, and I'll show you how to do that on the machine. And that's how it looks if you just do it in plain white. So I just leave some longish threads on here so that you can thread those up and sew them into the uh, project that you're working on. But you can sew them into the garment as well. And obviously this is far too long for, for a, a button loop or anything like that but uh, if you're doing a belt loop it's one long length and you can cut it into down to size. It's better to do it too long uh, than to, too, to do it too short. Can't do anything about it once it's too short. And the um, stitch lengths and widths that you select, it's it's down to you. You don't need to drop your feed dogs for this. Um, you just need to uh, pull it through gently, and you'll see me do that in the in the video. 
um, but yeah, you just need to just to keep an eye on, keep keep the thread central and keep an eye on it. But it's quite an easy and quick technique. So the second technique is uh, to how to make thread shape chains uh, on your machine. I did a little video earlier how to do it by hand. I'm going to do it in uh, contrasting threads so that you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a red thread here uh, and then I'm going to use a white on my machine just so you can see what, you do, what I'm doing. So you need to start off with quite a long, much longer length of thread than you're going to think. So I'm going to go for about a metre and a half. So then you fold it, you're folding it in half, half again, and once more. So you're left with eight strands of thread. Hopefully you can see that. You've got quite a short length in the end. Um, and that's plenty, plenty long enough for, for what I'm wanting to do it for. Depending on how thick you want your thread chain to be, depends on how many times you um, fold your thread. So for this one, for demonstration purposes, I did it eight times. You might want to do it uh, only four times, so you've got something a bit finer. And uh, the settings on your machine depends again on how, as long as you've got it on a zigzag, uh, and that zigzag's going over the top of your thread. Uh, so you just need to experiment a little bit. I've just done it on uh, 3.5 width and my length is two. And that just gives you a, a, a more dense stitch over the top. Um, so you just, you just need to mess about with your machine a bit. So I'll just cut to some footage of me doing it. And um, this is, and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards on, on a garment. So I'm just gently pulling through the threads uh, as my machine is zigzagging. So you can see that I've got hold of the uh, both ends and just gently pulling it through, ensuring that the thread is central between my foot uh, and just gent gently zigzagging over from one end to the other. And now I'm just going in uh, for the second time uh, just to, to reinforce it. You can do this as many times as you like, really, uh, until you're happy with how it looks. Like I say, you, I'm doing this with the red thread and a, a white, red and white thread so that you can see. Um, so you can do this however many times you like and then just snip it off and leave quite a long thread so that you can sew it into your project. So I've just threaded the ends into through a needle and uh, I'm just going to sew that now onto a piece of fabric. And you can just do it like that or you can use your machine to sew over the ends, whichever you feel uh, the best, best to do it. Um, you can do it inside a facing or you can use those ends, um, whichever you feel is the neatest, but it's, it's quite quite strong like that. And then you just loop it over and do the same at the other side. It's useful for um, a belt carrier on a dress or uh, trousers or anything like that, or skirt, and for button loops as well. You can use it for button loops. And it's, it looks like that on a garment. And it's just a really quick quick way of doing it. And if you're doing it on a garment, ideally you would have that sewn into the um, inside of the, that face in there rather than not having it on show. So the third little technique is something that my machine does. Uh, it's an electronic machine. It's a Geno Genome XL601. And um, as I was reading through the instruction manual, manual the other day, I remembered that it can do little darning stitches. They're only small, so you only would need a, a small hole. Um, but there is a, a function on there uh, that, that will do darning stitches, so I will just uh, show you how to do that. I think if you want something uh, like visible mending, uh, which seems to be the thing at the moment. I think that's quite useful. But first of all, you need to um, 
put something underneath where the hole is uh, just to give it that extra stability. So perhaps another piece of fabric with interfacing on uh, just to give it that, that stability at the other side so that, that the uh, threads are pulling through onto something. The, the key to this technique is just to keep practicing. Um, I did some practices on this fabric first before I went on to the jeans and just had a, a fiddle about. The, essentially, you're only going to have like a square centimetre co coverage. So the best technique I found was to, I've done it on this fabric so you can see clearly. Um, that's where my imagined hole is there and I've drawn a box of a centimetre around it and the stitches are going to be two centimetres in length but only one centimetre in, in depth, in width. Uh, so that's where my stitching will start and it will move, yeah, it will move towards the right. So I want to start there and it will go up and down, up and down 16 times and then you turn your fabric <coughs> and it will start there again up and down up and down and hopefully it will hit the center hole so for my machine it's uh stitch number 27 which if you look down here uh you can see that it's just going up and down up and down up and down um just have a look in your manual and just see if you've got this this stitch uh and you will need the wooden old foot genome is very handily tell you which foot you need at the top and uh r is the buttonhole foot so you need to make sure that your buttonhole is uh, your buttonhole foot is extended to uh, its uh, furthest part out, as far out as it will go. And the reality of this is, although I'm doing it on a pair of jeans, it's unlikely that you'll be able to do it in any awkward places uh, on a pair of jeans because you need to sew it in one direction and turn it round and, and sew it in a different direction. So if it's on the knee or somewhere like that. Uh, you might be able to get part of it under the machine but to turn it round and you, you're going to struggle I think um, but I think it's a useful thing to, to know so you need to lower your, lower your needle and then pull it back up again pull the work out so that all the thread is coming out underneath the foot and then bob your work back in again. Okay, so make sure your button guide's down, that your buttonhole foot is extended to its maximum limit. Uh, I've got my needle uh, in the down position. I'm just going to remove a pin that was holding the fabric underneath. Don't sew over pins. And you can do it, you can actually do this on, on automatic, uh, but I'm just gonna use my, my foot. And you just need to know, make, make sure all your threads are underneath your foot. So if they're not, pull, pull them through first. And just make sure that your work is as flat as you possibly can get it because these, uh, this is a very se a sensitive sensor. Um, <clears throat> and it was just going to do uh, a lock stitch. Uh, and then it's going to sew two centimetres up and keep incrementally moving across to the right. The beep means it's finished. We've got your first lot of stitching in. You can see that hole in the centre there, more or less. And then you need to turn your work <coughs> at 90 degrees. I've left the markings on so that you can see. So that, that, that's a, the last one uh, of the of the darning and you know it's the first time I've, I've done this it's not not something I've done a lot of so a bit of practice and I think you can you know you can probably get a good result obviously 
I wouldn't be doing red on a pair of blue jeans. I'd just do an, a navy or a, you know something that I've got. I've got some thread that is called denim, um, so it wouldn't stand out as much anyway. But the the quite they are quite sturdy. I mean, obviously you can't feel these, and I've just had a bit of fabric on the back so that it's got something to to grip onto, and that that hole's going not going anywhere. Uh, and then this is um, a friction pen, so I, I've just ironed that off so you can't see it. Uh, so I think it worked out okay eventually, but it did take a bit of practice to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good little technique. So it's a, a, a nice, neat and um, firm way of darning a hole, but it's not a great deal of good if you've got a hole that's in an awkward place. And I, that's where I find holes tend to be, on particularly on my own jeans. Um, so you could do it on... Um, somewhere that you, something that's that's not in a leg or a armhole unless it's quite low down so you can access it um and obviously you can't do it for anything that's very big but i think it's a it was interesting one to find uh, and that's really what what um, i wanted to talk about really is just that you know read your instruction manual uh, and just see what your machine's capable of i think a lot of us are um guilty of just using those two or three stitches, and I certainly am of the two or three stitches that we always use. Uh, and this machine has um, 30 stitches on it. And I probably use my straight stitch and my zigzag stitch and the buttonhole stitch more than anything. Uh, and I have never used that darning, darning stitch before. But I can also do uh, an eyelet on it. It's not brilliant, but it does a little eyelet there handy if you've not got a grommet so you're wanting to make something that has a little hole in it you can do faggoting stitches and all sorts on it you know it, it it's it's useful to know sewing buttons on is something that i've always done and that's on my, my instruction manual and i found that uh years and years ago on a youtube channel i think uh but you know if you read your, your manual you'd be surprised what what you can do leave me a comment below and let me know uh if you knew about all these th these things that your machine can do and uh, if there's anything else that you want me to cover or anything else that you've discovered that your machine can do obviously our machines are different and I do believe that the first two two techniques you can do on just about any machine uh, and then it depends on your settings like I said there's 30 on this machine some machines have hundreds and hundreds of stitches and probably only half a dozen of them get get used I hope you like those three techniques uh, and that you've learned something new today from me let me know below uh, if you if these if these are new to you and if you're gonna which one you're going to use first. And uh, please remember if you find these videos useful to like and subscribe and click that notification button below. And I will be back uh, tomorrow with some more techniques. I think I will be doing French seams around the, the an armhole tomorrow. Okay then, thank you for watching. Bye.